Okay, let's continue from where we left off uh, last time. So um, we talk about weight in we try to talk about weight in visualization, but um, before that, like I still like to kind of uh, go through some an administrative stuff. So there's no one on the other side yet, but I guess it's okay. And we do take taping, taping this. So, um, so uh, I I received your selection, and uh, this is a little bit big. Maybe I should. How about that? Bit. So, um, and uh, that's you guys' preferences. And let me just remove this thing here. So actually. Uh, it's quite diverse, and uh, if uh, you kind of remember, uh, no, this is my student CV. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we will count. I want you guys say uh, with a special formula here an optimization problem precisely and uh, so uh, but actually I didn't give you the alpha earlier I find that like, I actually didn't specify alpha um, so um, and uh, it's up to you guys uh, what, what do you want to pick alpha so the bigger the alpha it will be more diverse than uh, our presentations eventually so um, I, I of course I tested the result a little bit. If I pick alpha equal to one, then more or less there will be no no change from your preferences. So it will be like everyone. Uh, if I pick two, so that's like some overlap. Like in the sense I f say like I guess like three of you guys uh, have uh, have picked TensorFlow and three of you guys pick like. A carrot, and if I set alpha equal to two, then I'll push one of you guys uh, to kind of do something else. And uh, so, but if I pick alpha with one, then more or less I like, off you guys. Or it will be like three, three of the of you like will talk about carrots and talk about TensorFlow. So you you still have this uh, final, I would say like. Uh, a choice you can pick, like whether you want me to alpha equal to one or alpha equal to two. You can say alpha even bigger, but if you're bigger, then uh, you push farther away for your preference, basically. So I see like very few people in Tulsa, I would just assume like, okay, uh, everyone is happy with alpha equal to one. So the drawback is like, uh, you will, the, the, the persons that who pick the people that pick uh, carrots, Probably you will have one of that will be like the third presenter. He has to be a bit going to more in depth into the package than the other two presenters most likely because I assume the first two presenters will be covered like more or less like what what's going on already. So, and um, Derek, it's nice to see you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so. Okay, I'll just get started assuming I will have like alpha equal to one. So this is package where are we? Where, where, did, where did I set the alpha here? Um, okay, this, this is fake. I, I should skip this. This is the minimum cost there. I, I mean, assuming there's no constraint with the packages. And uh, let me shrink it a little more. And I think that's the actual optimization here. I'll just assume alpha equal to one. It is a brute force optimization because I, there's not a lot of choice here. Only you have two packages, only what? 11 or 10 people here. So it's like 2,000 something different uh, possible configurations. Assuming I don't, uh, uh, I mean, uh, kind of like arbitrarily force you to present something else. <coughs> So then, okay, let's go. And uh, that's basically your your kind of uh, 
final packages you are supposed to present. And uh, I will randomize the schedule as well. So randomize the schedule and uh, this, oops, uh, what, that, what did I do? Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's pretty annoying, okay. Uh, Ah, okay, that that's fine. I, I can just because I use I use Python too early and this is Python three. Uh are you sure? I think I have Ah that's even okay. I don't want to I don't want to screw up my system Python, but I guess okay. Just install one. What? Still, uh, let's see. I guess okay. Probably. Okay. Here, here we are. So, um. So that will be you guys schedule like start like something like February twenty six, mm -hmm. and uh, I will also post on on the web also. So uh, you can take a photo just as a proof. But I, I yeah, mm -hmm. actually, if I screw up this, uh, I mean I, uh, can you erase that by accident? Then you have um, the proof. So I I uh, yeah, I actually I think I already erased part of the code. Uh, so but it's okay yes so that that will be you guys presentation schedule so um okay let's go back to my to the main business here so uh just you should know again so we, we talk about like we are going to talk about way initialization um we spent quite a lot of time to talk about bad pop, I guess in, in a lot of detail now. I assume that all you guys should um, be quite, um, I, I shouldn't say familiar, but at least I guess you, you have a... Um, yes? Just something. Professor, yes? Um, how do we present from Tulsa? Uh, yes, oh, okay, let me look at that thing also, like, there's, um, Tosa Lawman, Tosa. Actually, this is a bad choice. Okay, Tosa Lawman, Tosa Lawman, uh, Tosa Lawman. Wow, that's really tricky. Lawman, Lawman, Tosa Lawman. Uh, so I guess I what, how we are going to do it is I, I I will I will write down the IP here. So I have the IP here, I think. So then, uh, when say they finish the presentation. Then you you guys will uh, connect from that other side to do connect to here and then uh, present from the other side. Yes. Sorry, we didn't get it. Say yes. What? You didn't understand. What's the process? Um. Uh. So I basically like when I establish the connection here, I will be the instructor. So when you present, you need to establish the con uh, connection like from your side and connect to here. I will kind of like write down the IP, put it somewhere, and uh, if needed, you can call the uh, IT people. But it's actually quite easy to establish the connection. You just make a distance presentation or, or, or something like what, what do they call that? Uh, yeah. Something, something like we kind of like we will be taking the class uh, when we will be. Yes, 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 yes. You, you, you will be like how? Uh, um. So uh. Uh. Actually, say uh. Usama, like let's say, do you mind to push? Ah, I don't know. This is hard. Uh, yeah. So, or oh, oh, I should say, who is afraid of? Is he? Is he here? 
No one? Hmm? Really? That's it. One, two. I have. That's weird. Sure. We have six people here, right? Might be that guy. Oh. Well, I mean, he's not here today. But he oh, was, okay, 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 okay. Didn't he say he was Spanish? Yes. He, he's not here. I guess he. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, I, I I hope he doesn't mind. Okay, actually, uh, it probably would be easier if we, we swap these two people here. Then then the con we don't need to, in the middle, try to change the connection somehow. And, uh, yes, okay, he's here now. So, Unsama, you are here also, eh? Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, like, Alfredo is about you. Uh, we, we just have this uh, very fair lottery that uh, I went to schedule for a presentation and you are going to present for Karis. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just figured out that like, it probably is easier if you and the uh, guy Usama in Tosa just swap the order. So then we have Tosa, Tosa, Lawman, Lawman. So we don't need to switch in the middle trying to rebuild the connection. Yeah, so Alfredo and Osama, are you okay? Both of you guys kind of yeah. I'll agree with the swap. So so then I will just uh okay, I don't know how I mark it. So I'll just swap you two so what we have like Tosa, Tosa, Lawman, Norman. We still have Tosa, Lawman, Norman. So unless No, I guess it's we cannot actually this is a uh we cannot actually this probably not cannot be avoid. So I guess we'll just stick with that um and then yeah the west the west let's say warbird uh do you mind to swap with mookie that's fine yeah then then it'll be only one session i mean one one class would be more tricky that we need to swap uh the connection during the class so okay okay we will just settle with that so i will just i don't know how i can mark but i i Okay, I will mark it in my brain, basically. So I will, okay. Uh, okay, okay, this is not stuff i supposed to show. So it's <laughs> ah, ah, okay. Uh, let's see, where am I? So, okay, yes, we, we are back to weight initialization. And uh, as I mentioned, I... Actually, one of the big uh, achievement, uh, actually, I should, I should say, I'm not sure say achievement or something, right? it's a, a recent trick that allow us to train deeper network is like the way to in, initialize the weight like, more wisely. Because um, we mentioned that last time, right? essentially you have a little network here. So each, you basically, each new one is just, um, what we are, re really what we are training is we're just trying to modify the parameters in the new one. That's basically some just those parameters will be just uh, trying to do do a weighted sum from the ones from earliest layer to the current new one. And um, and the weight, uh, if we initialize it uh, kind of like naively, it just doesn't work. Of course, I, apparently we cannot just set it w equal to zero, like we cannot initialize as zero uh, if that's so, then the output simply will be independent of the input, or like output will simply all seals that there's nothing we can train. But um, then the first attempt, of course, is uh, just trying to set it um, arbitrarily. So just randomize that. So, but the problem to do a random uh, weight initialization is that like, uh, oh, okay, you will see the problem about that. So it kind of works for small networks, but as it scale up, it just doesn't work. So we'll just look at a simple example here. Let's say we, we have a 10 layers networks, and uh, each layer, let's say, have 500 new ones. Here, we'll assume using 10 h for activation. Now, then the weight will just uh, assume a random number. So then a weight will be the matrix, where it will be a matrix with uh, the fan in, 
number of walls is fine in and number of columns is fine now, let's say. Or actually maybe swap, let's see. Uh, it depends where you want to multiply that, but anyway. Actually it probably makes more sense like uh this is fan in and oh uh, that's so bad. Um what is fan in and what is fan out? Oh sorry, fan in and fan out is the um uh number of inputs to the new ones and fan out is the number of output uh, of that new one. Um oh I shouldn't say that. I, I mean number of output out of that layer. So in the sense that you have to uh Whole, you think of the whole layer, right? So, so you have, let's say, previous layer. I have like n outputs coming out, and then mm -hmm. I, uh, I can just make a matrix representation. Let's say I call this whole layer of new ones with x. So it's a vector of uh, length x. So then, like in the next layer, is simply. I have W X plus B, something like uh will be the going this is like going for a linear layer, right? And then like going through the activation something. So this this um the the um okay, let me call this Y here. The dimension Y here would be the fan out. So in the sense I maybe I have output like M different new ones output. This is Let's use thing like n input and m output in the next layer. So you can think of okay. I, I also say like in the early layer it has n inputs and in the later out layer have m output there, m yeah m new ones there, and then uh, this will be like n will be the fan in, m will be the fan out basically. And um, and anyway the size of this matrix W will be just uh, kind of like with a dimension of fan in multiplied by fan out. More or less if we ignore that uh, um, dimension for B here. So, um, and that, that's the W. Let's say we just fix with some uh, fixed variance for that. Like here we assume that is uh, the way just uh, take a Gaussian distribution. So we take a Gaussian with variance like 0 0.01. Uh, actually, this is uh, actually standard derivation zero point zero one, and um, so, and if we just look at um, the st standard derivation of the output, I mean we have to pass through all the layers there, right? So each layer again, I here we said that we have five hundred layer ones per layer. So in this sense, like the fan in and fan out for each layer is basically the same as all five hundred. And we look at like how the output of the new ones are distributed. As you can see, like as we get into like high and high layer, um, basically the output is just equal to zero. So everything just becomes zero so like, after a while because, okay, uh, basically you can think of like. Um, uh, sorry, what is becoming zero? Oh, becoming zero is the it's the output of the new ones. So okay, let let me go back to this picture here, right? So you have one one layer. Uh, let's say we have input here, and then you weight sum this guy by this some palm some uh, weight parameters here. And then like go for some activation function also, uh, or actually I should write I write it here. So this will be weighted sum, and afterward go for some activation, and then I have output here. So if I look at outputs for each layers, and of course I have another layers and other layers and so on. And for the previous example, I simply have like each of layers have same number of new ones. It's all five hundred. So then like. Just look at the value of the outputs, or essentially the value of the inputs to the next layer, and uh, they are actually as you go in, go for like larger, I mean like deeper and deeper layers, the value just gets smaller and smaller, as you can see here, like um, in this kind of simulation here. So you start with like 
Uh, the value is a have a distribution. The input is also like Gaussian distributed. So, but as you can see, like it just gets smaller and smaller. So, of course, like, one thing you can uh, argue is that oh, maybe the W is too small, right? So, if we kind of increase the W a little bit, maybe in this sense we will increase the variance of the W a little bit. Let's say we'll just pick um, uh, W instead of like zero point zero one, just set it to one with the standard deviation. So, but then the problem is that like mm -hmm. you just get saturated for each of the layers. So, right at the beginning, you just add up or become one or become minus one, and then you keep doing that in every layer. So, uh, again, is if you remember, if you are in the saturated region, then if you do bad pop, you need to find the local gradient, right? But in the saturated region, the local gradient basically is just equal to zero. Again, like low information can pass back. So bad pop won't work in that region as well. So again, it's no good. So, um, okay, uh, no no question here, like no further question here. Like, at least you see this problem, like if we just arbitrarily uh, pick, uh, I mean, a, uh, initialize the weight like with a random Gaussian with some arbitrary variance, typically you either get too small or too big. So um, actually you can still pick the variance. That's a good variance to pick, but the question is like, what is that good variance? You, you just don't want to just fine tune it like boot force, right? you just want to like, like, like tune it. Like. So, but that's, like, that's the whole point. Like, you, you can theoretically an analyze that and it's actually not difficult also. So what we want is like you think of Again, like you have inputs is x, y, and you go for some weight here, and then you have output y here. So what we want is like after each of the layer, uh, essentially we we want that the variance doesn't change. If the variance doesn't change, we can keep it for a long period of time, right? So we we won't have this other saturation problem or like kind of uh, the output just get becomes zero, diminish to zero, uh, the problem like that. So we want to have this equal to that, and then we look look at what is the variance there. So variance is a linear operation. We can get into the summation there. And then afterward, it turns out that the variance of these guys is equal to this guy here. Uh, it's not hard to show. Let me just show it here. So basically, the variance of like the multiple of the product of x and y is is given by this guy here if x and y are kind of independent. So, of course we know that uh, this is a, some equation that you learn in, I guess, uh, statistics, or like simple say. So, uh, oh, actually that can be shown quite easily. So if you have variance of some variable x, is actually equal to what? It's equal to the expectation of x uh, minus the mean square, right? Something like that. Right? that that's what variance stands for. Right? So you want to see like how, for example, you have a distribution, like something like x is distributed this way. So the variance is talking about like how, how much is spread, right? And how much is spread is uh, computed like to say like for each of the x, see how far is from the mean, that's how far from the mean. So I'm take the square and take the expectation and so on. So this, if you just, elect, I mean, expand that, you have ex square minus, okay, this e, x bar is basically ex, right? So uh, minus x bar, uh, two x bar x plus x bar square. Then you take the expectation of that. Expectation is linear, so your expectation x square minus to x bar. So this x bar is a constant, right? After doing the uh, expectations, now it's constant. So you have expectation x plus x bar square. Expectation that is just x bar square. So but expectation x is just x bar. So therefore, you have like expectation x square minus um, minus x bar square. So basically, it's just that. 
expectation x squared minus expectation uh, I mean of course here you think of this as one variable so um, then afterward uh, you have this is a x squared y squared right so x and y are independent the x squared and y squared also independent so therefore like this can be split um, this is something like you 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 should know. Uh, uh, if you don't know, you should you should realize that actually, when you have like variables, let's say x y, like let's say just two variables, let's say uh, w, uh, let's say this is u v, and if you compute the expectation of that, um, if this is equal to that, uh, we call these variables are uncorrelated. So u and v are uncorrelated. And uh, uncorrelated is a weaker condition than independence, but whenever it's independent, it will be uncorrelated. So because we assume x, y are independent, so also like uh, they will be uh, x, y will be uncorrelated as well. And again, uh, similarly, like expectation x, y be can be written as expectation x and um, expectation y. Take the square. I have this here. So. And then, like, now if I look at, like, on the other hand, so we have one of this term here, we see, like, how it compares with variance x, variance y. So try to see variance x, variance y is just equal to this. We multiply that, we multiply that out, oh, we get this here, a little bit complicated. But if you compare this term here with this term here, it have at least this term is here, right? So both of this term. And also, like I can uh, write this is a little bit hard to see. Uh, this is like actually it's better to maybe write it as x bar. Actually, this actually is a x bar here, and this is a y bar here, and this is like a x bar y bar here. So and. and here also like uh, x bar y bar here and um, I have yeah I have like this minus, minus x bar y bar minus x bar square y bar square I have plus x bar square y y bar square I, I, again I just want to make it make them like similar so we just uh anyway i i, I actually actually do this i just <coughs> replace this with the um okay i i guess it's i i don't really need to look step by step like this i uh you can just go go back home and it's a little bit uh tedious but it's actually very simple algebra but if i just white like this and this is kind of just variant so therefore like you see like um I have this is actually just variance of y and this is variance of x here and I have this guy is exactly equal to this guy here so therefore like, I have this here so, um, so that does we have this equation here and this is really nice because we can immediately we know this we put into this here and then uh okay uh what's happening is like we can have several assumption here first we'll just assume like the input is still mean so if um input is still mean then this term will be gone right and also like we can also assume like the weight are still mean if we assume the weight is still mean then this will be gone as well so i mean this will be zero this will be zero so we only have this thing left. And that's very nice because then if I assume that each, I mean X and Y just have the same statistics regardless of N, then this will be simply some over N of this variance W and variance X, right? So therefore, like, what it means is that like, if we want this output variance it's the same as the input variance. We just need to make sure this, the variance of W is just equal, uh, equal to one over N. 
And actually, that that's long after half year uh, or half year or safe year, safe year, right? Some it should be safe year, but it also should be half year. Right? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, safe year weight initialization. This is kind of interesting because I typically you, if you have work like that, you, you use the last name, right? but safe is actually his first name. I don't know why they they they, they call it safe way into. I, I forgot what's his last name. Something start with G. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, this is the that's his last name. But somehow the the technical saving in the initialization, and as you can see, like if we we do that, actually it really did quite well. That like after several layers, we still keep the output um have the wide range that we we want, um. And this this worked well, but it for for ten H or like for some symmetric. Um, kind of activation function, but it doesn't work well for like Valut. Um, so as you can see, if we put Valut there after several layers, again like the the uh, output will just get decay. And so, but we can e easily fix that. Um, for Valut, will be something like that. Right? Again, like we have some x, uh, then you have a linear layer, mm -hmm. so linear operation have some. Output here, then you go for activation. You you get like uh, XL, let's say. Now, um, what we want again is like we want to have let's say this this one to have same variance as uh, as the input as the input. Let's say from here, we want the variance here after all this oper operation, like doing the um, uh, value operation and also if the weight of sum uh, is still the same as the previous layer, right? So then uh, I can write YL as this guy here, right? weight of sum of those guy, and then like if we go for exactly what we did earlier, this is equal to um, the the um, I mean n times uh, the variance of like W times x y. And W is basically the weight here, uh, and um, and now and, and of course we can apply the the previous equation again, right? The previous equation that the variance of a product is equal to the the product of the variances plus expectation of one of this guy. I actually this square of the expectation one of this guy times the variance and square of the expectation times variance of the other and um, so here we need to be careful unlike last time uh, we can just take out both of these terms right? we, we just assume like both W and X assuming but in this case, we, we can still assume W to be zero mean. So let's just assume W to be zero mean. Then we remove this. But um, XL, you see, like it's just coming out of this value layer, right? So it has to be all positive, right? So there's no way we can assume it to be zero mean. And actually, but we, we can uh, actually have a pretty good approximation of the uh, expectation. Of this guy here, um, wait. Okay, we we just set this to zero. Let, let's see. Yeah. Uh, let me just look ahead. I forgot like where. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes. This. This. This is fine. This step is fine. So. And uh, oh yes 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 yes. So here, here again, it looks kind of difficult. But here it's just saying that like your expectation of x square is equal to uh, expectation x square plus variance of x y. So because I variant of A is basically this guy minus this one, right? So I just put 
both of them together I have this one uh, now expectation of x square what is that Okay, okay. How how do you relate this thing, like expectation of x square with like kind of the statistics of this guy here? The only the only process this y go through is just a valued way, right? just like taking basically half of the kind of like half of energy is gone, right? So therefore, like what what we expecting is like this is like kind of like measuring like kind of like energy right this would be like half of the energy is gone this would be equal to like expectation y square over two something like that right and, and then like what is expectation y square is if we assume that guy is still mean that would be just equal to the variance of y right because like uh, again like Variance of y is just equal to expectation y square minus expectation y square. So if I assume still mean this will be gone, so the variance of y is just equal to expectation y square. So therefore, like it's just equal to this guy here. So now then again, like if I want this to have like same variance as the previous layer, the variance of this is equal to variance of this. I should set this equal to one. So um, then you see that the only difference is like compared with the previous case, I have like n variance of w is equal to one. I have a one half value here, so I have an, an uh, additional uh, uh, ratio. I, I mean a factor of two here. So if we do that, like that, uh, exactly, you see like go for value layer is still uh, can keep the energy as you go like for many many layers and uh, I, I think like this paper is actually uh, it's not trying to emphasize that so they have something uh, I forgot what this paper about like uh, I, I think this is the yeah th this is a uh, one, one of this image led paper like doing west led I, I think this is the west led paper uh, so but they also propose this nice thing here that uh, to do this uh, kind of modification of the uh, savior like uh, initialization that can train farther away when using the loop. Um, and that, that, that's basically it. And there are many more like work on weight initialization and uh, I, uh, if, if you and of course I, I guess this is the paper you want to first look at if you're interested in the area. So that's that's the thing. Uh, that's that's basically the safety guy. <laughs> I don't know why it's called like Glot uh, initialization, I guess. But somehow it's called safety initialization. So uh, for example, this can be one of you guys. Uh, if you guys want to do a portrait um, in this area, like you may take into that. Um, so uh, that's about weight initialization. So that's another trick I will talk about is like uh, called batch normalization. Uh, that's kind of like um, have a similar favor of this weight initialization. Basically, again, like you, you don't want to have your uh, output when you get out of a layer, um, kind of uh, dual lateral layers to get like uh, oversaturated or like uh, kind of like diminished to zero. So then, um, one thing we may want to do, we, we, we may try to do is basically, uh, we may try to uh, normalize the input somehow before we get into a layer. So um, what we can do is say, let's say uh, we have the input there and we first compute the empirical mean and the empirical variance and just scale that. So then uh, if we do that, uh, uh, so if we do that, for example, like we can do it like right before a 10h layer, for example, like we know that the 10h is somewhere, something like that, right? So if we do that right before the 10h layer, we will avoid to go like 
far away into the saturation region where we're just trying to like shrink it down, normalize that like somehow I want this region, let's say. So then like uh, preferably it may be good. Um, but of course I uh, this could be tricky also, like you have a tannage, you may have like some other activation function. And when we do that, like we always assume that like, it would be good to have uh, the inputs to the activation function. It's just a uh, very, with, very uh, with, has a Gaussian distribution, kind of like Gaussian, or like similar to Gaussian, with a very like, kind of close to uh, one. And of course, it may not be optimum. Uh, one way we may we may do I mean it's actually actually what people will, people did is uh we may also like after this normalization we kind of like um also also rescale it somehow. Maybe like we scale with some, some parameter gamma and kind of like and also like add the bias offset if necessary. And the point is that like these kind of parameters, we may train it also. So uh, we do the normalization, and afterward uh, also add this uh, rescaling step, but these rescaling parameters are all trainable. So then like, the nice thing is that it turns out like this step is unnecessary, then these parameters will be trained to just offset this step completely. So, um, so for example, like if it turns out like this, we don't actually need this step, then uh, we will just train the lateral, train these parameters to have exactly where uh, gamma is equal to this variance, and then the beta is just equal to the expectation, we we'll just counter, counter, uh, I mean, counter this step very completely. Um, and then that, that's basically the batch normalization, I summarize of that. Um, and, uh, And, and uh, this is some of the benefit potentially. Uh, I uh, it usually is nice to include that batch, batch normalization. Always nice to add that. Just uh, as you will see like later on, I will show you some example that sometimes they will have some artifacts though. The artifacts will be like because you are subtracting the mean and variance of this particular batch, so that statistics of this tiny batch will get into your training parameters. So, um, and you can actually uh, visualize the effect somehow, and um, sometimes it's not actually desirable. Um, but anyway, this, this is like a trick that people uh, usually will utilize. Um, hmm. And there's some some modification. For example, like you you can also uh, not just use the batch um, mean and variance, and uh, or uh, I mean you 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 may not need to store this batch mean and variance, but when you actually use that network, you can use the current statistics. Sorry, oh, sorry, the current input to compute the empirical mean and variance and use that uh, uh, to for for this particular uh, for this particular normalization step. Um, but of course you can also store the previous mean and variance as well. So this is just different flavor you may do. Um, um, and uh, he, here As as you can see, like um, um, yeah, I, I don't know this slide whether it's it's meaningless, but meaningful. Uh, but um, often, like actually, the next thing we like to talk about is like often, uh, you can. We saw like a couple checks already where right? we saw we we saw that like okay we we definitely need to need to initialize the weight uh wisely and also like uh we can do some of this uh 
batch normalization to kind of normalize your input uh, out input to the activation layer as well uh, so that it doesn't overflow or underflow um, and but in, in general this is actually it's more than just a little lateral in general uh, actually you can always can get some um, performance gain by simply employing more models so let's say if you have a model you have trained an SVM model you have a, a decision forward you have something else you can just simply combine them and often time if you just take the average like this you will just have like extra performance gain and uh, in terms of little lateral sometimes uh, like you don't actually um, need to even get use like different la different uh, models but just one lateral um, you can create like different models so for example like one way you can do it is like uh, you can think of let's say when you train the lateral when you initialize at different points you can think of that this is kind of generate different ensemble different like yeah generate an ensemble of models and you can use that to uh, take the average in uh, when you do the testing what I mean is like uh, Okay, like a simplest way, for example, is like simply you start at different points, right? And you train the model afterwards, you just take each of them uh, and uh, a testing, and then a testing, you just like one for all of them and then to tr just tr take the average. So, and this work actually, a, a kind of interesting work, they go even farther. What they did is like, they, during training, um, they, to use a kind of like um, training way with scattering. We didn't talk about too much about training weight yet, but you can recall that like the training way is basically when you do the uh, steepest descent or whatever, that's like how far for each of the step. If your training weight is big, then you go, you basically go a bigger step. If your training weight is small, then each time you go a smaller step. So typically you start with like when you are far from the optimum, you just have the training weight is higher, right? and when you are closer to the ultimate, you decrease that. So for this one, what they try is like they they just say like each time they have this scheduling of the training weight going up and down, up and down. So they have a pretty high training weight for a second, and then they they lower it. They eventually go to one optimum, then they increase the training weight again. In the sense, it just say like it should it could get out of the local optimum and go to another so then they just repeat that and eventually um, uh, get uh, just have an ensemble of models um, and uh, and uh, yeah I will skip this one I guess so another very famous uh, tough to, to do ensemble actually like sometimes people think of like this is a a way of do ensemble, but another way is like you can think of also a regularization. It's the dropout. Um, actually, how many of you have heard of dropout? Yes, you you are using that already, I guess. Was that yes. So, uh, and uh, so one. I, I don't know how you interpret dropout, but uh, one way you can interpret that is. Uh, okay, first of all, I, I, should, I also just briefly describe what is dropout. What it does is simply we are going to. Um, so this is the original network, right? So during training, what we're going to do is like for each of the layer, we randomly kind of turn off some of the new ones. Turn off in the sense that we just assume they are not there. We just remove them from the network. So they are not there now. They cannot. So in the sense, if I, I I remove this, that means that like this guy cannot connect to them anymore. So so they are, they are basically just not there. So then you train the network this way, and then you repeat that many many times. So you you, you we do it like you have once do that like you train the network, then you again do the same same thing. You randomly drop out different sets of uh, new ones. Then you would do do the training again. Then you do many many times, and then you have like an ensemble of uh, kind of like actually not not that. Uh, as you say, like uh, in this case, it's not an uh, in this case. I like, you continue to train, so uh, um, 
Yeah. So yeah, let, let me let me let me step back. So first time, let's say I remove this set of new ones here. I train the parameters. Then I have like what 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 should be the weights for each of this connection here. Right? So I have the weights for all of this connection here. So now in the next time, I we do it, but I remove some other. I mean, it doesn't necessarily some other, but I just again randomly remove some of these new ones here. So I will continue to train. So I still use the what I have been trained like earlier, but I continue to train it. Then I will do it like many many times. I continue to do that. So then, uh, as you see, like it would be pretty simple. Right? The training step, you basically just. Uh, let's say if I have a dropout mask like this, so basically saying that like uh, with probability of p, I will keep the little ones. So for the rest, I will just remove that. So and uh, I mean like with, uh, I will, I will just keep like uh, p percentage. I shouldn't use that percentage. P times hundred percentage to be more correct. A uh, p fraction of uh, new ones. And, uh, and and that and then so uh, some some of the reasoning here. Okay, one reason I guess I we we it's like you can think of it's just ensemble, right? But even though the ensemble is like kind of weird, right? Because um, you are not uh, when you do a testing, you actually have one model there. It's not like you have like now you train like hundred times. I mean, hundred different dropouts. Then you have like hundred different models and do it ensemble. I mean, take an average of that for the te uh, testing result. Um, but still, like roughly speaking, you can still think of like you 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 kind of have has a uh, ensemble somehow. Um, and other kind of like uh, uh, high level reason people give out is like. They just force the letters to be more creative. For example, like let's say if you have new ones that eventually can figure out different components, uh, just have uh, let's say it's trying to recognize a cat. So and then maybe like some new ones is trying to figure out whether it has a ear, has a tail, and so on and so forth. So when you remove some of this connection there, you are trying to say. I, I, I'm just using part of the features. I'm trying to uh, be sufficient to kind of identify a cat. So that allow us to have some redundant representation and so on. So, uh, okay, but I, I, I'm not sure that like, you, you would buy that. So I, I kind of, uh, uh, but I, I guess it's some, some, some uh, different kind of point of view. So but in any case, it just works. It works pretty well. And um, and but the, but the, uh, but there's some kind of caveat here. We need to be careful. So uh, because you can think of we train, we kind of like we train the network with uh, actually maybe we we just go like this here, just exactly. So we let's say we we have dropout of like one half. With probably probability one half here. So um, then, that then maybe a ch that would be like let's say we have a very simple letter like this. Then there would be like four different cases where right? either we can drop we will drop like both connection, we drop one connection like either W one or W two or like we 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 have no drop there. So then um. If you think of like all these combinations here, and uh, we think of let's say, uh, what is the expectation of your output there? So that would be like four different cases here, as I mentioned, right? Each of them, if like the probabilities is one, uh, is one half, so all these four cases have uh, equal probability. Then, if I look at the output here, I will have either this one, this one, uh, this one, or this one, right? And if I add them all together, I get this. So, 
what, what, what we see is that like the expected output will be kind of um, will be just like um, one half of the original way. Right? Let, let me let me think of a better way to explain this. Uh, yes, basically, when you train it, remember that like we we keep only p percentage or p fashion of the new ones, so that. Okay, yeah, we only keep p fashion of the new ones, right? Now we train the whole network like this, and each layer I only have p fashion of the new ones. Now, when we actually use this, like the weight after chaining, what's happening is like, it originally actually we have like p fashion of them are actually like missing, right? So now if we we use the same weight as before, what's going on is like, it will be, you expect the the um the sum of the inputs like the actual uh input to a new one will be much bigger right because like during training we drop p f only only keep p fashion of them now when testing we use the same weight but we keep basically all the new ones there so then if we don't do anything about the the um the input there Basically, the input will be much bigger than it's supposed to be, right? So therefore, like, eventually, as you can see, like, we should simply like uh, multiply by that fashion. So we have kind of, like shrink down the uh, the new ones um, input like by again a like, fashion of p. Then everything will just add up. So uh, so that's basically what what I just talked about. So. Doing a prediction, we'll simply use what you have been trained for this W and for all these parameters. But for each of the layer, for each of the input of the new one, you're supposed to just shrink that new one. I mean, shrink the input by the fashion P there. And uh, and that that that's it. And of course, uh, you can you you can also do the opposite if you think like I don't want to scale it during prediction. Uh, is bothering you even for this operation in prediction because like prediction sometimes often is a like, is um is time was that like, critical way eh? because like, you actually deploy the application so you want to reduce this uh computation as small as possible then you can also flip it like during training you divide it by p and then testing you just don't have this uh, multiplication there and that's that's basically it and uh, so okay I guess I, I, I'll just talk one more like very simple thing um, it's about data augmentation so um, I mean this is another trick like for you to train the lateral nicely uh, many times like when you have data you can always create more data think of audio video or like, images like you always can find some kind of symmetry, right? For example, like in audio, you train it like with some uh, speech recognition, let's say. Maybe you can adjust the pitch, add some noise, or like stretch a little bit, like change the delay and so on. Then you have like a new set of data, right? So this is called data augmentation in general. So for example, for images, like, like this, I want to have say, some data, like train, trying to train and classify to recognize cat. I can let's say I can flip it to a kind of, I can after I flip it it's still a cat way. Right? At least for, for human like we can definitely see it as a cat. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do lots of stuff like we can for example like besides flipping that we can do some cropping also like cropping scaling. We can generate all bunch of new images for training data. And uh, that's actually used in like many of these uh, work in the past, they always have data augmentation, um, and um, and we we can use like something like change. For example, for images, we can change contrast, brightness, 
uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm anything. I actually anything you can imagine. That actually, the rule of thumb is basically. You think of like whatever you do this distortion to this input data, and you as a human, if you see it, it still looks like you can recognize that. That is to be a good enough uh, on data. I mean, uh, modification. So then, I mean, just be creative, like because like data is expensive. Although like it's like kind of. There are a lot of them, but in practice, it's always hard to get by in reality. So it's always uh, it's good to try to do some kind of stuff like that. Um, and uh, um, finally, I guess I, a little bit uh, final words about like, about uh, when we do drop out as a, Oh, I mentioned trouble is like a uh, kind of the ensemble average stuff like that. But uh, people can often also think of this as some kind of regularization. So, um, and uh, you, you, it's some kind of regularization because, you, yeah, actually, when you average the uh, have a model average. It, it, it's like um, because because you think of like what is regularization first. So uh, regularization ultimately is trying to make your model less extreme. Right? So if you have your model here, it go to all the way extreme. You will be kind of like not not go all the way extreme. Then will be, for example, like one way very typical one is like as we uh, we we did it before like a lasso or like. Uh, um, taken off like regularization that is basically at, at then just make the parameters is at a L1 or L2 constraint to the parameters make them not as big uh, not go to extreme so then if you have like averaging across model whenever you have average across models you expect the model will be less extreme as original right so therefore like um, when you have like average, um, I mean, model averaging is always, uh, you can think of that as a regularization as well. Um, so, uh, and when you have dropout, actually you can think of dropout as a very, uh, just a special case of a general regularization framework like that. So you basically have some kind of model that with some parameter here, and um, you insert some randomness there into that model. The randomness in dropout would be like just like um, you are trying to remove some of the new ones like each time, like differently, kind of randomly, arbitrarily. So then, um, and during testing, you kind of do an averaging. I mean, dropout your average will be will be simple. In that case, you simply just scale it back like correctly. And uh, you 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 have actually a bunch of similar uh, approach like that, um, and, uh, and and actually one of them is called drop connect. By the way, it's like they just uh, instead of drop out the new ones, they drop out the connections. But I I, I think like um, yeah, if you are into this kind of stuff, you can easily imagine like some other possibility as well but <laughs> most likely someone already thought of that also but uh, yeah uh, but still like if you think of that like can be trying to make it a cost project I guess it's, it's okay too maybe you can try to think of some of the approaches and see if, if it work out well and of course like that someone else may have done it before but it's fine you, ju you can just compare with what they did um, and that's that's uh, uh, that that's another. Yeah, we didn't talk about mass pooling yet. Yet, but um, again, uh, you can do lots of like randomness like into your model somehow, and doing training to uh, and then like testing, just do things like uh, kind of wisely to um, uh, to uh, take into account like how you did the uh, when to I mean offset the randomness 
previously, then uh, you basically will have a yeah interesting interesting regularization that uh, that leak there. Um, there are many many of them. I I won't go into detail actually. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I I won't actually. So um, I guess I will just stop here. I will talk about optimization next time. So um, yeah, I was busy like like before my break from the last class. So I guess I'm stumbling through a lot of this stuff here. So uh, any questions? Like um, I I guess I can uh, explain better. Like if you have. Uh, just let me know. Like, uh, I I can. So no questions. Mm -hmm. So I guess I will see you guys uh, first day then. Um,